Welcome, friends and collectors. Thank you for joining me for an all-new episode of Diecast Emporium. In today's video, we're going to be checking out the latest case from Hot Wheels Car Cultures. This set is called Ronin Run, which features a bunch of JDM cars. And there is a chance that we may pull the chase out of here, which will be the Mazda RX-7. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight on with the unboxing. You can see it is the B case, for those that like to keep track of things that way. And you can pick up a set for yourself, a set of five, or a case of ten, at the link provided in this video's description, which is where I got mine from, jcardiecast.com. Great people. Be sure to give them your business. All right. Opening up the case. Let's take a look at it. Looks like we were not among the lucky ones, because one of these should be black if it was a chase, but that's all right. I'm very excited. Let's get going anyway. All right. First out of the box. We have number one of five, the 1995 Mazda RX-7. Take a look at this unbelievable card art. It is really, really good on these. Uh, you can see the Run and Run logo here, and then the backdrop, like a, a cityscape backdrop. Really, really cool. Here's the back, which shows you the other ones in this series. 95 Mazda RX-7, which is this one, the Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo, 81 Toyota Starlet, KB61, 88 Subaru Impreza, 22B STI version, and this vehicle, which would be the Chase if it was black, the Mazda RX-7 FC Pandem. Hot Wheels Collectors, Ronin Run Car Culture, bunch of your other copyright information. There you go. There are two of those in the case. Here is the other one. Let's keep going. Next out, ooh, this looks even better in person than what I thought. The Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo. Now, this is more of a candy apple red, a darker red than what it may look like on the card. Uh, in fact, it almost kind of gives you the illusion that the car's a bright red. In fact, it is not. But other than that, excellent card art for number two of five in the set. The Nissan 300ZX. Here's the other one. Continuing on, we have two of these in the case, which is the Mazda RX-7 FC Pandem. It bears repeating for a third and final time. This would be the chase if it was black, but uh, it is the standard white one. Number 5 of 5, which means it is a new casting as well. Typically in car culture, if you're not familiar, the new models that debut in car culture will often be the highest in terms of the number ranking. And then there's the card art for this one. Kind of gives you the illusion that it's almost anime-esque, like a cartoon car. You can see the different motions of speed that they're trying to depict by the scraping that's going on. Uh, I actually quite like that a lot. looks good. And it fits, because this is obviously a set of Japanese cars, and anime is, well, very Japanese. It works. All right, a very sharp purple-looking 1981 Toyota Starlet KP61. This debuted in red in the Toyota Car Culture set from last year. That's a set that's on my bucket list to get. I was not lucky enough to find one of those. But this one looks good in purple, and it has the, the work wheels on the side. Decoed in uh, in like a goldish brown color, and the small wheels. By the way, if you are new here, be sure to stay tuned for the second half of this video because we're going to crack open one of each of these, put them on the spin table, so you guys can get a better look at them. Here's the other one, two of those in the case, and the final two cars out of the box, arguably my favorite in the set, the '88 or excuse me '98 Super Impreza 22B STI version, in uh, like a burnt orange with a black carbon fiber hood. Card art, again, on this, amazing. It fits, it works well. And this one is number four of five. And then here is the duplicate for that. Okay, that's the case unboxing. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have the spin table out and open up one of each of these. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for sticking with me. We begin with car number one of five. This is the 1995 Mazda RX-7 in a dark blue. I really, really like the color that they chose for this. Uh, also, the five-spoke wheels in gray look really good on this casting. I think it's an obvious choice. They did this in uh, left-hand drive, which is good to see for the American market. You have your headlights, your Mazda logo on the front. You have your running lights on the side, your indicator light here, and then your brake lights, of course. Uh, you do have a license plate on the back of this car, which reads Twinin. And it doesn't say, it. all it says is Hot Wheels on the plate. So it's not a plate that is specific to any state here in the United States. If you like RX-7s, you're going to have a lot to look forward to here very shortly. Uh, there's going to be, well, there's two RX-7s in this set alone. And then there's a white RX-7 that's coming soon in the uh, Fast and Furious premium set that's coming up. So if you guys are 
as big of a fan as I am of the Fast and Furious, you can be excited because in 2023, they are bringing that series back. I hope to see a lot of new castings that, uh, that come out of there. So, all right, moving on. Number two, we have the Nissan 300ZX Twin Turbo. In this dark red finish, again, the license plate is still the same. It just says Hot Wheels, and it's white with the background. This time it says 300ZX on it. That makes sense, of course. Uh, for the top of the car, you have the sun. You have the split sunroof, which I like a lot. Uh, you also have your steering wheel, which again is on the left-hand side. Your headlights are actually part of the window insert, the clear window insert. Um, so that's a bit odd. I do like that they have casted in side view mirrors on this casting where they do not have it on the RX-7. That's something that I think in car culture anyway we should have on every car is to have the, the side view mirrors. But the overall profile and design of this car I think is perfect. It looks really good. It works in this color. Um, this has been out in the main line for a few years now. We've seen it in blue. We've seen it in white. I think we even saw it in yellow recently. So pretty cool to see it uh, get a a premium release in this set. All right, number three of five, the 1981 Toyota Starlet KP61. As I was telling you during the unboxing, I don't think that we've seen this car but one time so far, and that's when it was red in the Toyota set last year, 2021. In purple, it really stands out. Um, and also the, the wheel wells, or the fender wells, really flare out at the back. I think that's a nice touch on this car. Can't say that I've ever seen one of these yet in real life, so I don't know if this car is uh, specific to the Japanese market and specific to, to Japan. What I can tell you is it does have the steering wheel on the right-hand side of the car, which would be accurate. And on the back, black bumper, once again, the same style license plate with the white background, but it does have a little bit of uh, Japanese texture on it. It's too hard for me to see, so I can't make out what the text says, but obviously what the text says, text says rather, easy for me to say. Um, but it is done up in, in a white, like, Japanese style license plate. You have Toyota written out here on the front, your indicators, your headlights, and the wheels, as I said, are, are kind of like this brown gold color, and they work on this. Normally you would think that's a very unattractive and not a great color to be on a car, but on here anyway, it does work, and they seem to look the best. All right, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll finish out the last two in the Ronin Run Car Culture set. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for sticking with me. Now, I put out the, the blue version of the car that I'm about to show you, the 22B STI. This was in Modern Classics, and this is the color that when you think Subaru, this is what you think of. The blue color with the gold uh, wheels and hubs, which, again, is the theme of their... Uh, World Rally Team as well. So when they released this one in orange, I wasn't quite sure what to think about it, and I wanted to reserve my opinion until I got it in my hand in person to do a review of it. And I think that might be what a lot of collectors, or at least some collectors, are thinking. I think it looks spectacular. This orange slash brownish color with the black carbon fiber hood works. And you have the black mirrors as well. Uh, Huge fan of how this car turned out. You don't have any license plate on the back of this one, which is kind of disappointing, but you do have the, the 22 and the STI logo on the back. Uh, mine has a slight error with the tampos. You can see the headlight here is a lot higher than the headlights on the front. You can see the difference here, how it sh should be on the left-hand side versus how it ended up on the right-hand side. Again, not a tremendous big deal uh, for me. I end up displaying these in a glass cabinet, so I'll just face this one. I have this one facing towards the left, so you can't even see the right side. All right, on to the last one. The Mazda RX-7 FC Pandem. Again, a car that is based on a real vehicle in, uh, in this paint scheme. And for me, this is probably the one that I think everybody will want out of this set first, including if it's not the Black Chase one. And it just looks great. You have the molded-in hood scoop on the front, your lights. You have four of your, uh, I call them rally lights, but that's not really what they are. The four headlights at the front. Wheels are excellent. You have a roll cage in the back window, too. Racing-style roll cage. And the highlight for me is the back, the tampo and the graphic work that they've done on this. You can even see almost the headlight bulbs, or excuse me, taillight bulbs, the circles. They just knocked it out of the park with this one. 
All right. Huge thanks again to Jake Carr Diecast. I pick up all of my Mattel stuff from him. There will be a link in this video if you want to add this set or this case to your collection. I can't recommend it enough. You guys know me. I do tend to be a fan of uh, JDM cars, but also, you know, a fan of pretty much any other car. But uh, this set is a winner. I think it will be hard to get, and I think it will grow in value over the years. So don't wait. Don't hesitate. Pick up a set of Run and Run for yourself. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next Diecast Emporium review.